everyone, this is Ross, and today's video I want to talk about overwintering citrus. And this is kind of really how you're going to be able to grow citrus in a colder climate. Now, I'm in zone 7A in the Philadelphia area, and certainly every year I've been able to overwinter citrus indoors. Um, it's actually quite simple. So, what you have to do is before your last, before a frost comes in sometime in the fall, you need to bring these trees inside. And you need to come up with a really nice area that these trees are either going to, one, continue to grow, or two, just kind of sit there and be dormant. Here in this particular location, we have it on the west side of the house in the western window, which gets a lot of heat in the late afternoon. So this is a really good area here, especially if we can get that sunlight to hit the side or the top of the pot. That'll warm up the root zones of these plants and citrus will just go berserk. Um, you can see there's a lot of new growth actually that's happened over the winter time. I've had about two or three growth spurts this winter. Um, so this is one option. You can put it in a warm place, either a southern or a western window. You can also give it some supplemental lighting or you can put this thing in kind of like your basement or a garage that's gonna sit around 40 degrees, somewhere around there. And if it's around 40 or so degrees, you don't really have to water it. Um, in fact, if you water them too much, because citrus are really finicky and weak plants, they really are weak. Their root systems are very susceptible to root rot. So if you have a, a really heavy soil with, that holds lots of water in your containers, and you continually water that, your tree is gonna die over the winter time. So what I'd recommend is give it maybe about four ounces of water, maybe once a month, and that's it. And that's at those temperatures. If you have it in a warm window like this, you're gonna have to water it uh, just like a normal house plant. You know, you start to see this thing show some signs of stress, you need to take care of it. Also, if you want it to grow like this, we need to be feeding it throughout the winter time as well because the thing still loves to grow and you can see there's actually some nice little deficiency here on the leaves in addition if you look real close which is i don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick this up you can you can kind of see the spider web here this is spider mites and usually in the house in our drier houses this is a real big problem that the spider mites become active. They love to feed on citrus. This is a huge issue if it's left unchecked. And that's also probably a big reason why I'm seeing some uh, deficiency here on the leaves. But this is a tree in particular I'm not really too fond of or really care too much about. So we may end up getting a number of varieties here and grafting it onto this particular variety. Um, What's interesting, I guess, about this particular tree is because it's grown so much and it has all these really lanky limbs, you can see there's about four limbs here. One here, two, three, and four. We need to actually cut them back. So when we move this out here, we're gonna move this outside very shortly. We have to very slowly adjust this to the outdoor sunlight and the outdoor conditions. Um, but that's going to be done sometime after our last frost, which is for me in May, sometime around May 1st. So once we've got May 1st coming around, we're going to bring this outside, adjust the sunlight, but also I want to give it a nice little haircut because this thing is too lanky. We're going to come in here with the pruning shears and really bring it back to about this height all the way across, which is about half of that new growth that it's put on. We're going to cut it back. We're gonna take out about half of that. And that way it's gonna form a nice little branch structure a bit lower on the tree, which is really gonna help support these fruits. Some other things I wanna recommend, and this is kind of the last point I think I wanna make because we're sort of exhausted here at what I can show you right now because we're only indoors and this is my bedroom. But um, one big tip is that if you're gonna be growing citrus in a colder place, and it's gonna be in pots, I would definitely recommend you grow some citrus that doesn't have to sweeten up very much. Things like limes, lemons, kumquats. These are the things that really don't need that, that uh, tons of heat or even tons of cold in the winter time to help them really sweeten up that fruit. You really need a particular climate and something like a grapefruit as an example, 
is really going to take a long time to ripen. So if you have something that's going to take a ton of energy, it's going to suck up a lot of fruits, maybe like a nice big navel orange, that's a lot of energy that's going to be dedicated to that one orange. So I would just recommend finding smaller fruits that don't need nearly as much sugar content. And you're going to have a lot of success. You can do this in a whole host of climates, all the way down to zone four, I would imagine. Just by bringing it outdoors and then bringing it back inside. You may have to give it some supplemental lighting in those climates, but if you have enough heat in your summer, you should be all right. Okay, guys, this was a nice, nice little short and sweet video. I will catch you all soon. Take care.